All right, this is our last major example um, from chapter seven. Uh, certainly in the, um, in the chronology or order of the videos that we're intending to watch, there's still one additional lecture video after this that contains some smaller examples that we will see on the whiteboard. But this is the last one that has its own standalone video for this particular chapter. So in this example, um, we're going to come across a possible uh, trick that because we're showing it and we're discussing it, we don't want to get tricked by in any future situations. Okay, so the first thing we can do is approach this problem the same way we do every single one. Even before we get bogged down in the numbers, we can draw that picture. So we have a situation here where we have a ramp that's 20 degrees. There's a height H and a distance D along the ramp. And at the very top of the ramp, there's been a um, block pushed into a spring. And as it slides down the ramp, friction is acting against its motion. And by the time it gets all the way to the bottom, we're told that it stops. So if it stops, that means V equals zero. So this situation at the top is our before, where we're pushed into a spring but not yet moving. In this situation at the bottom is our after, where we have the block stopped moving, but no longer attached to a spring. Okay, so we have our standard before and after questions that we can ask ourselves. Kinetic energy, potential energy from gravity, potential energy from the spring, and whether that's showing up in the before situation or the after situation. And we can go through and answer those questions. Are we moving at the start of the problem? We are not. We are pushed into a spring, about to be released, but not yet moving. Are we higher at the start of the problem? Yes, we are. We are at the top of the ramp. And is there a spring at the start of the problem? Yes, there is. So we can write 1 half kx squared. Are we moving at the end of the problem? No, we are told that we're stopped. Are we higher at the end of the problem? No, we're at the bottom of the ramp. And is there a spring? No, we have lost all of our energy by the end of the problem. Which means that even before we reread the problem to double check, we actually can glance at this situation and realize that there absolutely has to be a work term because there has to be something that is taking away all of our energy. And that something is gonna be friction. Okay, so um, before we get down to that work term, now we can go back and look at what information we have. So as we read through the problem, we can, um, we can write stuff down. So a two kilogram mass, so M equals two kilograms, is pushed 10 centimeters. So that's the compression of the spring, 10 centimeters. But we know that that has to be 0 0.1 meters to be used in our equations into a spring with K equals 3,300 newtons per meter. That's the um, spring constant. And it's shot down the incline shown. So that's, we release the um, ramp and it causes it to move. If a friction force, so friction force of nine newtons against the motion, acts on the mass as it slides, we're trying to find the distance the mass slides before it stops. This distance is our unknown. Okay, so let's start to plug in what we have. So as always, we have energy before. So we have energy before plus work added. equals energy after. And we can plug in those terms. So the energy before terms, we have zero plus mgh plus one half kx squared. For the work term, let's just go ahead and say work to begin with. And for the energy after, 
all of that equals zero. Zero plus zero plus zero. Okay. So let's look at what the situation currently, um, currently is. So at the moment, we have this equation to solve for, and we can go one extra step and plug in information that we have. So the mass is 2 kilograms, G is 9.8, but we aren't given the height. We'll come back to that. Then we have 1 half times 3,300 times the X is 0 0.1, oops, 0 0.1 squared. And then the work term, it's the force in the direction of motion. times the distance. No, that's going to equal zero on the on the right side. So we can clean this up quite a bit before we decide whether this problem seems solvable or not. And I promise you it is solvable, but we'll make sure we get the key trick here under our belts. So this is 19.6 times height. This term we can plug in and get 16.5 all by itself. And then for the force in direction of motion, 9 newtons is against the motion, and so we have negative 9 times the distance, and all of that equals 0. So right now, what it looks like is that we have two unknowns, D and H. And that's the trick to this example. This is the reason why this has its own video as well, even though it's very similar to the previous examples. I'm going to erase the um, table of stuff that we made. You can always go back to the video um, beginning and, and make sure we know why we said yes and no to different things. And I want to highlight something important here, and I'll just um, redraw the triangle briefly. What we have is that this height h and this um, distance along the ramp d are two sides of the same triangle. And so I'm going to use red just so we can see it. We can actually write instead of just height h, we can go back to our understanding of trigonometry that we've been building since chapter 3 and write that that height is really the hypotenuse d times the sine of the angle 20 degrees. Now notice something important here. The work term did not care at all about that 20 degree angle. The work term is just looking at how the force and the motion compare to each other, and that was along the ramp. The reason the angle shows up in this problem and not the previous one is because in the previous example we were given these two values. We were also given the 30 degree angle, and I'm even going to flip back one slide real quick. We were even given the 30 degree angle that we could have, without being given the 1.5 meters, we could have solved for it. In this situation, we have two apparent unknowns, but we can still rewrite, rewrite h in terms of the unknown that we're asking for, the distance d. So that's the only real trick in this problem. This is the only thing that makes this problem a little bit different than any of the others. And now we've seen it and we'll be stuck um, or confused by it in the future. So we've got the 19.6. And now, just so that we can track it in red, I'm going to write it down here. D times the sine of 20 degrees plus 16.5 minus 9D equals 0. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, just switch to purple for the remaining two, um, two lines. 19.6 times the sine of 20 degrees is 6.7. So this is 6.7 times D. Um, I'm going to subtract 16.5, the one that doesn't have D associated with it, minus 16.5 from both sides. We do still have minus 9D here on the left. And so if this goes away, then on the right side, we have negative 16.5. Now, although it 
might look a little bit complex, what we see is that we have this many times the distance and that many times the distance. So just like with 2x plus 3x, we can add those terms together, where 6.7 minus 9 is negative 2.3, and then that's attached to d, and that's equal to negative 16.5. So I will divide both sides by negative 2.3. So negative 16.5 divided by negative 2.3. We get in the bottom corner that the distance D is 7.2 meters. Okay, so I'm going to bring this a little bit closer and hopefully in view. But we have that the only real trick was recognizing that rather than two separate unknowns, we actually have um, just one unknown, the distance d, because of triangles. <laughs> and the distance here that we solved for is based on combining the terms that contained it and then solving for d the way we would solve for anything else. As always, you can re-watch this video um, and try it again in a couple of days to make sure it all makes sense to us um, and ask questions in the discussion boards or emails or whatnot. So the next time that we have a separate example video, it will be in Chapter 8. Um, and so I will see you um, in a lecture video or one of those example videos. See you then.